welcome to our review on total internal reflection and fiber optics. So what we need to understand here then is that the angle at which light hits a boundary is going to actually determine what effect we see. So what we've got on the right hand side there are three different diagrams. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at each one in turn and understand what's happening in each case. So the top diagram there then, the angle of instance is below or less than the critical angle. So if we have our ray of light hitting that boundary between glass and air below the critical angle, then what we actually find is that there's some reflection and some refraction occurring with our ray of light. If we go to the middle diagram, then the angle of instance is equal to the critical angle. So we still have some reflection occurring and the rest of that wave is then directed along that boundary. And the final example there is that if the angle of instance is greater than the critical angle, then we get something called total internal reflection. So that just means that all of that light is being reflected back inside the glass. So none of it's actually leaving to go into the air. So what we need to remember then are the two conditions that must happen for total internal reflection to occur. So first of all, we've got to have an angle of instance greater than the critical angle. And the second thing is that the light is traveling in the denser of the two materials. So total internal reflection wouldn't happen if the light was traveling through the air and coming towards glass. It will only happen if it's traveling in the glass towards the air. Now we can actually use this idea of total internal reflection in fiber optics. So when we're talking about optical fibers, we're referring to very, very fine glass cables. And we can use these to transmit very large amounts of information. And we can also use them to view inside the body without having to have extensive surgery. And the way that it works is that those waves that we're actually transmitting are moving along the fibers using total internal reflection. So I've given you a diagram there to show you how this actually works. Now I have seen them ask you to actually complete one of those ray diagrams before on the exam paper. So they will give you literally the starting point, they will give you the actual fiberglass, and then you'll have to carry on that pattern. So if they ask you to complete this, make sure number one, that your lines stay inside the fiber. Don't rush and have them then coming outside of the actual fiber itself. Also make sure that your lines are meeting at that boundary at a very clear point. So don't have them crossing halfway, not actually managing to meet each other, etc. because you're gonna lose a mark for that. You've gotta make sure that your angles are approximately equal. Now you don't have to use a protractor, but just make sure that they do look roughly equal. So don't have one that's a very, very small angle, another one that's a very large angle. Try to get them all looking roughly the same. And then finally, make sure that you include the arrowhead to show the direction as you should do with any ray diagram. So in terms of the uses of these fiber optics, then fiber optic broadband is now getting quite commonplace. And the way this works is by using pulses of visible light or infrared. Now, the reason we'd use this is because it allows us to transfer large amounts of data very quickly. Second use that we mentioned earlier on is in these things called endoscopes. Now an endoscope quite simply is a device that's going to allow a doctor to see inside the body through a very small incision. So what we've actually got inside that endoscope are bundles of optic fibers. So we'd send visible light down one of the bundles, which is then going to obviously go inside the body. It will be reflected down a separate bundle of fibers. And then the image that's produced as a result of that can either be viewed by looking into the fiber itself or we can transfer it onto a computer screen which is what you can see in the picture at the bottom there